Hi there folks, my name is Damien Bird. I'm a Microsoft Cloud Solution Architect and former MVP. And in today's demonstration, I'm going to show you how we can use KUA, a computer use agent, to reason over an invoice file and process that into a legacy system, an ERP, an accounts payable. It's an automated process from end to end. Now, if that's something that interests you, make sure you like and subscribe, and let's jump across into that demonstration. So in order to understand KUA, you can see I have a system online here. It's my legacy ERP system that I'm going to manually log into. And I would do this every time an invoice arrives. And of course, I have an invoice. It's coming via email. I've opened it, and I would now need to come into my ERP and create a new invoice and add in the vendor details, etc. And that's a manual task, and it's something that I can't automate using Cloud Flows because there's no API for this legacy system. And I might traditionally use Robotic Process Automation or Power Automate Desktop, but now we've got KUA. So in order to demonstrate KUA in its quickest form, I have an extension in the browser that I've come across, and I have a natural language prompt. Now, we're probably already familiar with writing prompts for ChatGPT and Copilot, and I have my instructions here, including some data that's in JSON. And at this point, don't worry about that because we're going to get our automation in Power Automate to do that for us. But what I want to demonstrate here is I've pasted that prompt into this tool on the right hand side. It's open source. It's not Microsoft. It comes without warranty from my side. But if I hit send, what you'll see is there's some thought process going on, some discussion with a language model. And then it goes through the process of logging into this website for me and then it'll go and create a new invoice entry, and then it'll go and type in the details for that invoice. And of course, I'm using no hands at this point. You can see that every time it goes to make a, a next thought process, it's taking a wee screenshot, it's working where everything is on that screen, and then it's typing in the provided data that I gave it as part of that prompt. This is computer use agents. It's all using large language models, and it's not a script-based RPA, Power Automate Desktop or equivalent. It is purely based on my description of a process and some supplementary data to then put into that legacy system. So the question is, how is that going to work or how does it work in preview in Copilot Studio? So I have an agent in Copilot Studio primed. It's ready for a mail to come in and I have that email already fired up with an attachment containing that invoice from earlier and I'm going to send that and kick off the process. Now I have this Copilot Studio agent and I'll go over it in a bit more detail throughout the course of this video, but it has things like a KUA agent, this accounts payable ERP. It also has the ability to send an email as part of its tools and it has a trigger, which is what makes it autonomous. It has the ability to look in a mailbox when an email comes in, it can trigger a flow, and that flow can then pass the content of that email, of that attachment, back to the agent, so that the agent can start reasoning over it using its tools in order to carry out a task. That task just so happens to be to run our KUA agent and enter all the details into my legacy ERP. Over on Power Automate, if I go and hit a quick refresh, we should hopefully see that our flow has been triggered in the last 30 seconds. That's when I sent my email, of course. And if I go into that flow, we can see the structure of that email based on when it arrives. I'm doing some filtering for the attachments to get that PDF, and then I'm passing the details into a prompt and then onto my agent. Back onto our agent, if I have a look at the activity, that's where things happen. That's where our agent makes a plan and it starts carrying out its tasks based on its instructions and its tools and its knowledge. And if I click on that right now, we can see the plan coming together. And if I look at the activity map and the transcript, we can actually see that it's already launched our KUA agent and is going through the process of taking screenshots, analyzing where it is, launching a browser, etc., in order to carry out the various tasks that I've given it based on the instructions and the data from the invoice. Now, it just so happens that this is all based on a virtual machine and I can load up that virtual machine and we can keep an eye on what's happening. So you wouldn't do this in production, obviously, but it's quite handy in a demo. We can see our computer use agent getting to work. 
Now at this point, it's taking a screenshot, working out where it needs to type in the username, and it will slowly work through the process of providing the values for the username, for the password, before logging on, just like we saw in our Chrome session. Now, the good thing about this is it can make mistakes. It can work it out. It can fix things. I'm definitely not using my hands here, so it's quite an interesting one to watch. It's not a script, as I mentioned earlier. It's not something like RPA or Power Automate Desktop that must follow those exact instructions. So if your user interface changes or if there's an error message that pops up on screen, your KUA agent can analyze that screen, make a decision and continue with your process. I'm going to let it get to work and we'll come back to this later. So whilst we're waiting for that agent to complete, I thought we'd have a look at our flow that's triggered in order to start our autonomous agent. If we go into edit, we can see that this flow consists of a subject filter. Now I've learned from experience, you do not want to be triggering all of your emails coming into a mailbox and sending them all to your autonomous agents because you're going to rack up a huge bill. Now, over on the filter array, I'm simply filtering for PDFs. There could be multiple different attachments. You might have your own logic. I'm just looking for PDFs. And then I have a get attachment action, which just so happens to get the first ID from that filter array because I'm always only expecting one file. This is the perfect scenario your logic might be different. Over on Runner Prompt, this is where the magic happens. I have a custom prompt that passes across the file from that attachment into a prompt. Now you're all probably familiar with using ChatGPT, with using Copilot. I have written another prompt that is based on extracting information from the content of a file. It has an input parameter, and if I provide that original file as input, I can hit test and what should happen is it will analyze that file and it will show me some example output on the right hand side. And it's that output that I'll then use when I send across my instruction to our agent. And just like that, we can see this is the output, the JSON that I had copied into my first demonstration in my browser with that extension. This is what we're passing to our agent so that it can understand the data that it needs to put into our ERP. The final piece of this flow is purely calling that autonomous agent. It's called the Demo Autonomous Invoice Processor, for what of a better word. And you can see the instruction that's been sent. We have received a new invoice from, and I'm using the dynamic email address, the from email address, and then process the following invoice details. And that includes the output from our prompt, which is that lovely JSON. So when our agent has sent that message, it knows exactly what to do. It's got the email of the original sender, which means I can send a reply back to that user, either directly or as a draft. And it has the content of that invoice. It doesn't need to worry about the content of the file because the flow has already done it with a prompt. So if we go back across onto our agent after a long period of time, 786 seconds, now this will inevitably get faster. If you think about it, there are multiple screenshots being taken as the KUA has a look at where it is in the process. We saw that when I used the browser extension, it maybe took about 20 or 30 seconds. I suspect this will inevitably get a lot faster too, as we enable all the compute power that's required to create this process. But what's happened is if I go into the activity map and have a look at the transcript, it's gone through that process and it's ultimately created a new entry. And in order for us to confirm that, if I right click, I can have a look, open up the image in a new tab, and we can see that invoice three was actually added there with the invoice details, including the payment amount of 77.23. So our agent has done what was expected. This is very much a preview feature, but it demonstrates the power of KUA and how you can potentially automate legacy systems. And whilst I've used a computer use agent in this process with Copilot Studio, there is still Power Automate Desktop for legacy systems. I do have a video on Power Automate Desktop, and you could, based on this particular flow, swap out this sender prompt to the specified copilot with call a robotic process automation and still automate your legacy systems without Copilot Studio. But it demonstrates where the technology is going, and hopefully, you've learned a new acronym KUA computer use agents. Okay, one final lesson for those that are still hanging about. You want to see how I added the computer use agent to Copilot Studio. 
Well, I've done it already. It's part of my tools. I'm in the config. You'll see that I've given it a name. I've also given it a description, remembering that description is incredibly important so the agent understands when to call that tool. But then we have the instructions and those instructions enable the KUA to know the steps that it takes in order to perform its specific tasks. And as we scroll down, you'll see I've got a machine that's all based on RPA. If you've already configured machines in the past, there is a virtual machine that's already set up for this particular KUA. And finally, we have inputs. In this case, I have invoice details and a description, again, enabling the agent to understand the data that needs to pass. That, of course, is based on the message that I send via the cloud flow to the agent autonomously, which says process the invoice based on the following data, which is the JSON data that comes from my earlier prompt in my cloud flow. Jumping across onto the machine config in Power Automate, for those that have never seen it before, here it is. I have a virtual machine deployed. And if I go into edit details, you'll see that it is enabled for computer use. Remember, this is in preview. I look forward to seeing what you build with Kua. Thank you very much for watching. Please make sure you leave a comment below so I know what you're thinking. And if you haven't already, make sure that you like and subscribe. And I look forward to seeing you again sometime soon. Cheers.